Welcome or welcome back to the channel Chris Can Hoop and we are doing a new series. So this series is called Back to the Basics. Now I have a lot of people between the age of 12 to like 35 watching my channel. Mainly I like the instructional videos where you get the 12 to like 18 year olds. Above that is like they watch the 1v1s, the actual games I play. I'm starting this series for the younger viewers um, who want to learn basketball. When I was coming up, we learned what the actual basics were not on the court but in terms of coming off the court learning plays what the th different positions mean what they do and how they coordinate with each other so this first episode of back to the basics will be how to read basketball plays and play charts to get into it we're going to start with what the numbers one through five mean you should already know what these mean a lot of y'all in that age group play 2k if you're younger than that, you really don't need to know what it means because you're just going to be learning the basics of the game anyway and how to move with the ball and things like that. Especially if you're in that age bracket of like 6 to 10. Probably 10 years old is when you start to learn the positions and what they mean. So the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, what do they mean? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are the offensive players on the court. Now this is not like American football where you have, okay, you have a whole defensive team that comes out. The same five that are on the court for offense are the same ones on defense and they kind of do the same thing so one will usually be your point guard two is your shooting guard three is your small forward four is your power forward and five is your center okay now some examples of these point guard or your one you think of like steve nash they're usually facilitating plays they're not too much of shooting but if they want to or need to they can lock in and start shooting kind of like a chris paul when you think of a two or a shooting guard and this is going to be controversial when i say this you think of your steph curry's your clay thompson's they can make plays but they are really good shooters and really known for their shooting ability you got kobe bryant even though he wasn't that great of a shooter you think of your james hardens like a shooting guard three is when you get into your small forwards and that's when you start to dip into some notable small forwards include players like Kawhi leonard jason tatum jimmy butler lebron james and demar derozan okay shooting forward are usually players that can roam around the court they can make close shots long shots they kind of do it all they're not primarily the shooter they don't primarily play make but they can kind of roam and fill in different areas they're a versatile player then you have your four which is your power forward and they're usually kind of doing the job of a center they can block shots they kind of protect the basket rim protectors things like that but they also can shoot a little bit and they can take shots further out so think anthony davis uh dirk Nowitzki, that's a power forward kevin garnett julius randall these are power forwards now sometimes these players do kind of play a center role depending on what the lineup of the team is but they're usually a four your fives are centers so the centers are usually the players that are mainly at the rim they take the closest shots they're usually the more powerful players they're usually the tallest as well and they're mainly your rebounders so sometimes you can get an offensive or defensive rebound as a smaller player your one through four but mainly that is the job of the five or your center now some of the centers that are um, in existence now Giannis kind of but he's more of a four you think of players like uh, Anthony Davis he's a four and a five it depends on the lineup they have you got Jonas Valanciunas those are centers right they are mainly under the rim they're in the paint they're under the basket rebounding powerful dunks it's just what they do so now that we got the positions out the way when reading these uh charts for different plays now let's get into what the actual symbols mean because knowing what each position is and going into the symbols makes a big difference when you're learning to read plays so if you see a circle around a player or a circle around a number on the play that's the primary ball handler for that play so if you see a solid line, just a, a straight line, a curved line, whatever it is, if it's solid, that is just player movement. Players moving this way, players moving this way, things like that. That's just player movement. It indicates that your one, two, three, four, five are moving in a certain direction on the court, as you can see on this chart here. Any line is player movement. There's no separations in the lines, things like that. Now, as we see on the play that we're using as an example here on the screen, you have your primary ball handler, the circle, which is your one, right? So your point guard, your one, is the primary ball handler. What does this squiggly line mean? The squiggly line means that he is dribbling up the court at that present moment. So when you have your primary ball handler and a squiggly line, 
that means that the primary ball handler is dribbling dribbling in a certain direction so in this case he's already come up court now he's taking the ball to the left and curving around the perimeter while dribbling the next one and is not indicated on this play but i'll show an example of what this is if you see a dotted or dashed line that is usually a pass from one player to another and it'll usually indicate um, in this manner here as you see on the play if you see a line that's interrupted by a perpendicular line if the line looks like a t you see a line and it just cut short by a line straight through the middle that is usually indicative of a screen what's a screen i'll show an example here of a screen it's usually when you have the player come up he's sort of a block to the the defensive player and that gives the primary ball handler the space and he doesn't have defense on him so that's how what all the diagrams mean i mean what all the uh, symbols on the diagrams mean for calling plays uh, now let's take a little bit of an ad break so this is actually a shout out to my channel sponsor wgg energy this is some jitterless energy blend okay it does contain caffeine so be careful how much you consume but this is my new channel sponsor shout out w bro hey bro all i can say is this first of all this shaker is clean this green color and then these three flavors right here so here's the flavors and i'll explain what the flavors are we got a uh, beach and peach which is a mango white peach cool type of flavor we got dragon aid which is dragon fruit and pink strawberry lemonade that sounds fire and then we have the galaxy grenade which is watermelon guava and lime that sound good so yeah go ahead and rush over to wgg energy and go grab you some use code chris can hoop and you get 20 percent off of your order www.w.gg get you some inner g you know what i'm saying so we're gonna take a look at this play here okay so what is happening here a lot of things are happening here so we're gonna we're gonna take it step by step and we're gonna use a very simple play all right so if you take a look at this play that's on screen right now we've already gone through the different positions what the symbols mean and how the diagram flows we see the three-point line we see the top of the key the free throws we see the basket up there in the top and we see all the positions so what does this play mean we're gonna start off with our primary ball handle so it's not going to tell you exactly where who's shooting whatnot it will direct you on to kind of how to think on what's going to happen so we have our primary ball handler which is our three our small forward and he's going to pass it to our two our shooting guard who's going to pass it to our five who's our center outside the perimeter right now and the five is going to pass it to the point guard right our one then the point guard is going to throw a pass and it looks like it's going to nobody doesn't it your three or your small forward is going to run around your four who's your power forward your power forward has come closer to the perimeter or the three-point line to set a screen on defense for you the the small forward is going to run around that screen or over the screen and he's going to curl in towards the the rim and he's going to meet that point guards pass at the rim and finish at the rim so a little bit of a basic play here this is like as basic as it can get when it comes to running a play only way it could get simpler is if there was nobody else in the court and it's just one pass straight to the basket but that's the basics on how to read that play there so that's it for today's video this is just the basics of how to read a play on the offensive side i hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it the next time we'll get into how to incorporate defense into reading the plays and from there we'll go out on the court and we'll also learn some of the basics when it comes to ball handling moving with the ball and then scoring the ball as well as well as some defensive tactics currently i'm injured with an achilles rupture that has been repaired and is you know there's a whole recovery process with that but uh, the more i recover the more intense we'll go with these different videos hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something from it like comment subscribe all that good stuff and we'll see you in the next video